Hey guys, welcome back to Anthony's Tennis Sub. My name is Anthony Hirsch, and today I'm going to go over the Indian Wells men's singles draw. I'm going to go section by section, uh, covering the seeds of the section, the biggest story of that section, the best matches of that section, also what the actual uh, round of 16 match is going to be. Then after I go through section one, section two, section three, dissecting every section in that way, I'm also going to give my quarterfinal predictions, my semifinal predictions, and also my final predictions. Uh, I am excited for this event. Djokovic will be coming for revenge, first time playing at Indian Wells uh, since 2019. And uh, this is, uh, you know, Yannick on a 15-match win streak. Carlos, we'll see how he looks. Rafa playing his second tournament after Brisbane uh, since, you know, uh, first two tournaments since Australian Open last year. Stopped playing for about a year or so. It's going to be interesting how all of those guys are looking in this tournament. And you have so many interesting underdogs, interesting names thrown into the mix, like a Rublev. You know, Zverev, Runa, Hercoc, Rude, Demonor, who's playing great. Then you have guys like Dimitrov, Umber. Dimitrov loves playing at Indian Wells. Then you got a guy like Ben Shelton. Uh, and Bublik is in there too. I mean, it's going to be interesting how it all pans out. Sebastian Baez is on a win streak. So, it's going to be interesting how it pans out. Appreciate you guys joining in. And uh, don't forget to like the video. And don't forget to subscribe, like always, if you are new. Uh, but yeah, gonna go through section by section. Without further ado, section one, we got the seeds are Djokovic, Echeverry, Tommy Paul, and Umber. Uh, like all those guys, uh, Paul and Umber are two of the flashiest guys on the circuit. If we get matches with them against Djokovic, those are gonna be fun matches to watch. Story of the section, Hugo Umber is on a crazy run right now. Um, that would be really fun to, uh, Fun to watch if they can play, uh, if they can play Novak and to test Novak a little bit. Um, so that'd be really, really fun. I think, uh, two guys that are, you know, Paul isn't the biggest hitting guy around, but he's pretty aggressive, all court player, constantly moving inside the court. Um, so either of those guys versus Novak would be fun. Story of the section, uh, Hugo and Bear's on a crazy run right now. Whether it was Moselle to end the season last year, literally in the last week of the season, or whether it's, in Marseille, the way he's playing in Marseille, or whether it's uh, just any tournaments he's been playing recently, Dubai, obviously, last week, in HP 500 in Dubai, beating Medvedev. But even last year, he beat Rublev in a very close match. Um, and he's been beating top, top guys, and it's, you know, it's, it's very exciting to see a guy with such big weapons who doesn't really have that many holes in his game to poke through, which really makes people think, if he can sustain this, He's a top 10 guy, and he's pretty young too. He's 25. Uh, he's turning 26 later in the year, but he's 25. I I think that this is a guy that, you know, if we consider like Rude, Tsitsipas, Next Gen, this guy's also one of these guys that's going to be around for a while. The question is if he can sustain the form, which is a big question. Um, so we'll, we'll see how long he can sustain it. Like we saw with Francis Tiapo had a good run of form for a little bit, and then he kind of lost it a little bit. But uh, we'll see. Hopefully, I hope that Hugo doesn't fall into that holy 6-0 in finals. And I think everybody's looking at mouthwatering Umber versus Djokovic and what that's going to look like. And what that might look like is a guy who's so confident in his own game, like a Yannick Sinner, who is confident in the weapons that he brings to the court, who can push Novak off the court and, you know, kind of full round with his kind of rhythm and uh, not give him anything that, that or hopefully not give him anything. I, I feel like that was one of the biggest issues with Hugo is that he was kind of up and down and mentally was a big part of that, but he was very up and down and hitting a lot of errors um, often just off of very neutral shots. But now I feel like he's really honed in on his game and he's been able to be so consistently and impressively aggressive. He's always had the talent. He's always had the skills it was just about getting the wins and getting in the habit of winning. And uh, listen, Djokovic might have lost the Australian Open and the United Cup, but he's still in the habit of winning. He won four of the five biggest events last year. He's still at the top. So anyway, uh, I'll tell you what I predict will happen later, and I'll do that for every section as well. And then Dark Horse's potential upsets. I've got Kovacevic, I've got Mickelson, and Umber, uh, I kind of think Kovacevic is kind of going under the radar a little bit as a very talented American guy coming up. 
92 in the world. He's got as high as, I think, 75, 80 in the world. Um, got through qualifying uh, last week in Acapulco, beat Hijikata in the qualifying, then beat Jordan Thompson off of Los Cabos. Played a pretty good match against Runa the week before. He played a very good match against Tsitsipas um, there. And uh, he's, had, he's had a few solid results um, that I think are impressive. And uh, I just want to give him a shout out, especially over the last couple of weeks. So you never really know uh, for sure with, uh, with him. Uh, he could potentially have Echeverry bet- before playing Novak in the third round. Then I've got Alex Mickelson, like I said, plays Munar. Mickelson's impressive. I mean, he dismantled Demonor, who's one of the most informed players on the planet right now, uh, before be- going up 6-0, 3-0 on Jordan Thompson, who would go on to win the title in those Cabos. He's been impressive even long before that. I know he's a bit of a messy, kind of inconsistent player right now, but he's very new, inexperienced. He's still figuring out his game in a big way, but he's so clearly talented and has so many tools to offer. And um, I think that he's all, he's a guy that's dangerous. So I don't know if I would pick him over Tommy Paul. I wouldn't, but I also won't be surprised if there is an upset there. I'll just go ahead and say that because he is a very big talent. And uh, Tommy Paul just lost, I think, 6-0, 6-4 to Draper last week. So we'll see how Paul shows up. That'll be interesting in itself. And then, uh, obviously, Umber as well. Already spoke about Umber. Round of 16 match. Djokovic beats Umber in three sets. That's my prediction. Novak is Novak. And I still think he's at the very top of the game. And I, you can throw any name at me, and I still will just be like, it's Novak. And I'm not, I'm not going to say that guys can't beat Novak, and Yannick's done it three of the last four times, and I, Yannick can, could absolutely do it again. And uh, I just, it wouldn't be even that I would not be shocked. I will, uh, you know, I'd almost be expecting it at this point for, for Yannick to do it or somebody else like that. So he can lose, but he's still at the very top. He's still playing at a top tier level. This is an event he loves. He won this event three years in a row, did Novak, and um, I just think don't underestimate Djokovic. And uh, yeah, he's got he's got Hugo, and Hugo's going to be tough. All the things I said with the big weapons that Hugo has, and he's so confident, and you need that confidence. But does that confidence dwindle a little bit when you play against Novak? That's kind of the question. And I guess we'll see what happens. But I've got Djokovic coming through that in three sets. And I just think he's going to be so motivated after, honestly, like the, honestly, after the, the losing his two best, ma- two best majors, um, co- consecutively at late stages of his best, ma- two best majors and most winning majors, uh, to center and Halcrest to do to two different players as well, two young players. That are gonna be more and more a problem, even as he keeps getting older. So Novak's gonna be motivated while he's still around, while he can still win to show his absolute best. He doesn't want to just beat Hugo. He wants to beat Yannick. He wants to beat Carlos. He wants to be at the latest stages of this tournament. He wants to beat Danielle. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I've got Djokovic. I think his motivations are gonna be so high, and I really just can't go against Djokovic. But before I move on, how have those two played before? I think I. I have looked into this, but I don't remember as I, I speak. Okay, so they played once in 2019, Wimbledon, Novak won in straight sets. So it would be their first match in a long time. It would be a very good one. I hope we get it. Section two, I've got Casper Rude, Fokina, Nori, and Herkoch. Those are the seeds. Rude, Fokina, Nori, and Herkoch. Some opportunity here, no doubt about it. Some opportunity. Nori is far from his best form. Fokina is inconsistent. And uh, Kasper and Herkoc, uh, it will be interesting how it unfolds. Story of the section, I've got how does Rude do after a couple of great weeks on hard courts. You know, he didn't pick up a title on hard courts in either of the last two weeks, but he had some great wins uh, in the semifinals both times, beating Tsitsipas and beating Runa. Runa was a fantastic match and uh, just, you know, just huge, huge forehand hitting and just such great fight and heart from Casper down a break a couple of times in that third set. And, uh, very, very good stuff. Similar to Titspots, by the way, as well, saving so many chances against Steph, especially in the second set of their match. And, uh, to reach two finals in two weeks straight, I think, uh, it's just a big question. How does Casper do? Cause is it a hit on his confidence that he wasn't able to pick up a title in either time? 
or does he just say, you know what, I did well, I did well enough. And you can say what you want about the Jordan Thompson match. Rude did not show up with his best, and Thompson was playing incredibly well, by the way, but even though that one was disappointing, the match against Demon Orc, Demon Orc is just playing so crazy that I think it was just tough. It was just tough for Casper to do much, and uh, he should feel like he should be beating guys like that, but Demon Orc is just, he, he's like a top five, top ten guy at the moment. Like, Demon Orc at this exact moment is playing crazy, so, and he's, What's so different about Demonor as well is he's, he's, he's a problem for everybody, which is the exact polar opposite of what it used to be. And it just shows what hard work can do for a person, even if you don't believe in their game or can see it. It's about, it's them. If they believe in their game and that they can maximize the most out of it with some hard work and make it so that, yeah, well, not, not only is my speed impressive, says Demonor, but I can make my, I can be aggressive, step inside the court. I can play well at the net. Which came in handy against Root as well. I can, I can have great depth from my defense, you know? So, shout out Demonor. He's done everything right. And, uh, anyway, it was just tough for Casper, but Casper's been playing great. Matches of the section, Root versus Herkoch. That's my ma- uh, best match of the section. I just think that I, I didn't see any other ones that I thought were that crazy here, but that would be very entertaining. And it goes back to what I said about Casper. Herkoch is interesting. I really don't know what to make of his results recently. Um, I mean, he's, the, here's the thing. He's playing good, right? But it's just like how, how well, you know, how, to what extent, how well is he playing? Like in Dubai, he lost to Umber. He had a couple of match points on that. Let's see what that does to his confidence. He's just playing too many of these moments with tiebreakers. He played nine consecutive seven point tiebreakers, which I wonder how far that is from the record. Um, but you know, I, uh, he lost to Greek Spore in 6-7-7-6-7-6 in Rotterdam. Greek Spore is underrated though at the moment. He lost to Umber again in Marseille at the Australian Open. He lost to Medvedev. Hercoc is playing well. He's losing to very, very top players, but it just feels like, I don't know. He, he's not at necessarily his peak, peak form, but he's playing very well. I feel like that would be an accurate and su- succinct way to, uh, describe Herkoch's kind of, uh, kind of form at the moment. Uh, you know, I, I, I like Casper. If, if we see that, uh, then I like Casper. Dark Horses, I've got Monfils. Monfils has been playing well recently. He's in great form, which is so good to see. He's almost 38 years old and he's still an incredible athlete defensively as well. And, um, I guess we see that nowadays more than ever with a guy like Rafa, with a guy like Monfils who are similar age. Um, it's very encouraging to see that they can still, you know, move and play so impressive athletically. And it, it goes back to, listen, a good athlete's a good athlete and, uh, Novak as well. So, um, great to see that they're still performing at such a high level athletically. Um, and yeah, Monfils is still great. Uh, but round of 16, I've got Rude defeats Monfils in two sets. I've got Monfils making it to the round of 16. Um... Uh, he's got to go through Max Purcell. He's got to go through Hercotch. Uh, and then also, and then Nori on the other side. Hercotch is the big issue of him making to the fourth round. But I just like Monfils. I feel like his form is going to lead him to something. And also, he's had pretty good results at Indian Wells. Even in, um, you know, even not that long ago. This is a pretty good tournament for him. In general, I mean, 2021, he reached the fourth round. 2022, he reached the fourth round. Before that, he reached the quarterfinals. Uh, he's been doing pretty well at this tournament, even, uh, even pretty recently. So I, uh, I like Monfils getting through that. And then I've got Casper really picking up and, uh, beating Monfils in two sets. And, uh, okay. Then on to section three. I've got Medvedev, Korda, Manorino, and Dimitrov. Story of the section. Can Medvedev make it? through the impossible section unscathed. Uh, this section is hilarious. I, uh, it's, it's so tough for Medvedev. And I know Medvedev reached the final last year of Indian Wells, but if you watched him play Dimitrov at 2022 Indian Wells, or was it 2021? 2021 Indian Wells, when he is, he had already been struggling year after year at this tournament. And he was up three, like, he was up a double break in a set on Dimitrov, cruising, 
And it looked like, okay, he's finally finding some form at Indian Wells, beating a great player like Dimitrov, who always plays well at Indian Wells. Then Medvedev just completely fell apart and started playing just such weird tennis for what the level that we're used to seeing from him. And I just think that Medvedev at Indian Wells, he said it even himself last year on route to the final, uh, had to play Tiafo in the semis. I mean, Tiafo was great, but he didn't have to beat a guy like an Alcaraz or a center or a center or somebody on the route to get there. He had to beat Zverev, but Zverev was still coming back, but that was still a great win. So a really, really good win. He was down a set and a mini break and a tiebreaker came back. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I just think that Medvedev, I don't know if he's going to be able to keep replicating that. And I, uh, I, his draw in that section, I mean, on the other side, Fritz and Runa aren't so bad, but that section is, is just tough. Uh, with, um, with Korda and Dimit, uh, Korda, who beat him in Australian Open, Dimitrov, who beat him in Paris last year, Manorino, who has a winning head to head against Medvedev and is always tough for Medvedev, uh, and then you have another, other dangerous guys like Sakhalin, you've got Wawrinka here, you, you have Mahach, so, and also Dan Evans, for example. These are tough players. This is a very tough section for Medvedev. And that's why I, I am highly considering that Medvedev might not get through the section. So, uh, so matches of the section, I've got Korda versus Medvedev. If we get there, Dimitrov versus Medvedev or versus Korda. Dark Horses, I've got Sebastian Korda. Korda has been playing great. I mean, he had to retire against Rublev in Dubai, did Korda, but he lost just three games on route to, uh, on route to, I believe, the uh, fourth round there. So... I mean, um, it, just three games lost in his first couple of matches. And uh, Korda, I always think, is impressive. Just such a clean uh, striker of the ball. And I think right now he's getting some experience. He's allowing himself to play. I think mentally he's getting better. Uh, experience is a big part of being able to improve mentally and perform well in the big moments, especially in tennis and getting that rhythm, getting that momentum, playing in these high, high intense moments. And I think Kord is doing that now. He's playing more, and I, I think he's going to be more and more dangerous. So my dark horse is Korda. Round of 16 match in the Medvedev section. I've got Dimitrov beating Korda in three sets. Um, I don't have Medvedev getting through. This would mean that Medvedev likely loses to Korda or for, to Sakhalin, for example. But in my draw, he loses to Korda. And... Uh, yeah, Korda also beat Medvedev, I'd like to say in Shanghai, was it? I believe it was in Shanghai that Korda also beat Medvedev. So he's proven he can be a problem. Very tight tiebreaker in the first set, then won there 6-2 in the second set. Yeah, in Shanghai, where Medvedev likes to play. So he doesn't like playing that much at Indian Wells, does Medvedev. And I got Korda taking him out, but Dimitrov is playing so well. I've got Dimitrov beating Korda in three sets, and Dimitrov... Likes playing even the top guys at the moment, and he's beating nearly anybody outside the top ten. And uh, he's just that kind of level right now. It's like a, he's like at a top ten level. It's like Umber and Dimitrov. They're both not in the top ten, but they're both rising, and they might as well be in the top ten. They're both playing crazy. Fourth section, I've got fr as the seeds: Fritz, Baez, Runa, and Musetti. My story of the section is: How does Rafa look? And uh, honorable mention to the story of the section, Fritz a big favorite in the section, question mark. Uh, Fritz likes playing at Indian Wells. He always rises his level up to the occasion at Indian Wells. Um, it's a pretty, the section is a pretty good section for Fritz. I'm not going to lie. Like you've got Baez and Musetti. Baez is in great form, but I'm not sure that Fritz at Indian Wells on a hard court, this hard court is going to do, uh, do much, you know, Fritz loves, loves these kind of conditions. Um, very, very slow conditions. A ball bounces up right to a sweet spot. I, I, I think, I think Fritz loves playing here. And Musetti is just way out of form. You've got Runa on the other side on an outdoor hardcore. Raunich and Nadal. Who knows about their health? Who knows about their health? They are dangerous though. Um, and that is a crazy first round. We'll get to that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a big section. But the big question is, how does Rafa look? You look great in the, uh, in the exhibition, but it is just an exo. But in exhibition, the thing about an exo is that when you're, when the, the thing that you can get out of an exhibition that you can't get, uh, you can't usually get out of it is when 
you're not even sure that a high level player is currently capable of something. So that's when you can get something out of it. And Rafa and Carlos, we weren't sure if they were going to even be able to play amazing athletic tennis at the moment. Uh, and they did. So that's when you can get something out of an exhibition. I said the same thing when Demonor beat Alcaraz in the pre-Australian Open exhibition. Like, Alcaraz didn't even play that poorly, but Demonor played phenomenal. And I was like, you can get a little bit out of this because it shows, Demonor shows how crazy he can play against a top guy like Carlos. And that was a big deal, I thought, for that. And this is a big deal, as big a deal as you can get from an exhibition to show that Rafa is still performing at an incredibly high level and he can smack that forehand and it is it's impressive it's it's impressive so uh, i mean he is hitting that forehand so hard and so consistently and he hit some really impressive ones in that match his uh match against raunich matches of the section nadal versus raunich nadal versus runa um the uh and a potential nadal versus fritz which would be a rematch of the indian wells final a few years ago um, Nadal versus Raonic. Raonic has beaten Rafa twice. Um, you know, Raonic tends to hit the ball pretty flat and pretty hard, which I think can hurt Rafa. Um, the Ra- Raonic also beat Rafa in Brisbane in 2017. Uh, that was uh, right before Nadal reached the Australian Open final, but he was just coming back. But still, impressive victory for Raonic. And uh, Raonic, you know, was so close against Demonor at the Australian Open Center in Rotterdam, but he had to retire from both matches. But if Raonic is healthy, I think Raonic is going to be really tough for Rafa. And uh, after that exhibition against Alcaraz, I kind of think a lot of people are expecting high things from Rafa. And I just don't know if Rafa is fully ready, but he might be. Um, I, I I will say this. I think the myth of Rafa, which has been said before, I've said it before, but is that I, he doesn't need a lot of, he doesn't need to play a lot of matches to get into form, I feel like. Some other players, it's different. But I feel like for Rafa, we've seen it time and time again where, like Indian Wells 2013, 11 years ago, he played Indian Wells and uh, that was his first hardcore tournament over a year and he managed to win it. He was considering not even playing it. And all of his trainers were saying not to play it. And he ended up winning, beating Del Potro in the final in three sets. Um, so Rafa can do this, but, you know, he's 37. It's going to be harder. He's around the age that Roger was, even a little bit older, though, that Roger was when Roger won Miami. But he is a little bit older as well. Uh, he, Rafa can do this, but it's very tough. Um, and Raonic is a very tough opponent, I think. It's a, a lot of it is about the health of Raonic. If Raonic is there and Raonic is healthy and he's playing the level he's been playing all year when he's been healthy, that's a tough opponent. That is a tough opponent. So we'll see ra- how Rafa can do. Um, but I just think Rafa struggles sometimes against a big hitting, flat hitting guy, uh, on a hard court. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how it happens. I mean, Roth at Indian Wells is obviously fantastic, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, dark horses and, pot- uh, and potential upsets, Nadal, Raonic, and, uh, I've also got Baez. I threw Baez in there because you never know. The guy is so confident at the moment. Uh, my round of 16, a uh, bit of, maybe a bit of a shocker is Fritz defeats Raonic in two sets. I've got Raonic making a run. Uh, once again, it's about the health. For me with Milos, if, if Milos is healthy, I don't see why he can't have a few top wins. And also, like I said, this section has opportunities. He would have to make a huge run. He would have to be Rafa, then Runa. But we forgot, Raonic is a former world number three. He's beaten top guys before. He's beaten Roger. He's beaten Rafa twice. Um, you know, he's had big wins before. He can play a very top tier level of play. And uh, Rune on an outdoor hard courts, I still think he lacks confidence. If Raonic is able to get that Rafa victory, which is the biggest if of my hy- hypothetical here, uh, then he'll be full of confidence. And I just don't think Rune will like playing Milos very much. And uh, that I kind of went by that. And then the third round is going to be far easier than the first round or the second round, or it should be easier. Um, it's not easy. It's still all high-level, top-tier athletes, and they're all great players. But you have Shapo versus Van der Zanschkulp, uh in the first round, and then the winner plays Musetti. So Musetti's great, but right now he's lacking confidence, and he can lose to nearly anybody at the moment inside the top 
world's top 150, 100 in the world at least. He's losing to a lot of guys. So I hope Lorenzo can find it again. But yeah, I'm going Raonic to the fourth round. I, I kind of feel it. And if he's healthy, I don't see why not. Taylor, I've got him winning in two sets. Over Raonic, the health is a concern, and uh, we'll see if Raonic is able to win those first three. But yeah, Taylor, I, I'm high on Taylor at Indian Wells. I just think he picks it up. Section 5, Rublev, Lahechka, Tiafo, and Tsitsipas. Story of the section is how does Tiafo do defending semifinals points? So going over Tiafo section, he's defending semis. If he doesn't get even close to defending semis, I'm not sure exactly how far he can drop, but it would be a big drop down. Um, I believe to like the top 25, top 30, uh, which makes sense with his results. I mean, he won a uh, tournament on grass before Wimbledon last year. He got to the U.S. Open quarters, but, you know, not not so, so great for uh, Tiafo. But his section uh, for him to defend Lyovich or Rusevori, even Rusevori already is tough. Rusevori reached the quarterfinals of Indian Wells last year, um, I believe. Or was it Miami? It was either Indian Wells or my Miami, and I believe it was Indian Wells. No, it was Miami. It was Miami. Okay. Uh, glad I looked that up. But, uh, okay. So he reached, but still, Rusevori is a tough customer. Lajovic is actually kind of under the radar as well. But, uh, then you have Altmaier on the other side. You've got Sitsapas. That's a, that's a tough section to be in. Then you have Rublev on the other side. So consistent. Lahechka is also a seed there, like I said. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think, uh, I'm just not confident in Tiafo at the moment. He can always pick it up. He did well defending at US Open last year when he needed to, but I just think that uh, Tsitsipas, for example, is going to be too tough. Um, so I don't think Tiafo is going to do very well. I don't know if Tiafo is going to reach the heights that he did again. Uh, to be honest, I'm worried for him. It's too early to say, but uh, I'm I'm more worried for him than I am for most players. Um, but, you know, you can say a lot of pros and a lot of cons for Tiafo. I just want to see him focused and improving again and trying to get back to that level. Um, you know, last year, the only surface he didn't win a title was on hard courts, and that's his best surface by far. Uh, so, you know, he's a great player, and uh, let's see if he can get it back. He had a great, like, almost one-year stretch of great play, and then he lost it. So we'll see if he gets it back, but I don't predict he will. Tsitsipas versus Tiafo, Tiafo versus Rublev are my matches of the section. Dark Horses, potential upsets. I've got Lahechka actually. Uh, Lahechka has kind of been actually impressive recently. I think uh, people aren't kind of giving him credit, but uh, Lahechka has kind of... I'm not as high on Lahechka as I've seen some people be, uh, you know, over the last year or so, but his recent results are not that bad. He beat Hatchinoff, for example. Hatchinoff coming off the title last week. He beat him 6-7, 7-6, 6-4. There he lost to Bublik. Um, in Rotterdam, he lost to Herkosh, 11-9 in the third set tiebreaker. Um, but, you know, he, he's, he's had fairly good results. Reached the final of Adelaide to start the year this year. So, I don't know. He's a bit up and down. He's inconsistent, which is part of why I'm not as high on him as some people. But I just think that, you know, uh, never know with, never know with this guy. And I feel like this section is not open, but it's not the most closed off, impossible to get through section. He's got Eubanks or Nakashima in the second round. They've got Rublev in the third. Rublev be very tough to beat, but you never know. So I just want to give him the nod because I feel like not that many people are giving him the credit at the moment. And then round of 16 match in the section. I've got Rublev beating Sitzboss in three sets. That would be a great match between two guys that have been top 10 for a long time. Sitzboss now and exiting out of the top 10 for a few weeks. Rublev did that in August of 2022. But for the most part, these have been two very solid top 10 guys. And, uh, you know, Rublev just had that crazy situation with the default call. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how mentally he's composed here. I don't assume it's going to affect the tennis very much. He's just so consistent. I've got him beating Steph in three sets. I don't think Tsitsipas likes Indian Wells very much. He lost to Jordan Thompson here last year, which is, I think, the first really glimpse of what uh, of Jordan Thompson's best that I think a lot of people saw. He served insane in that match. One of the best serving performances of the year, maybe. Um, and... Uh, you know, I, but even outside of that, I don't think Steph's ever reached the semis here. 
He's usually losing before the quarters. I think he's made like two quarterfinals. Indian Wells is not a strong tournament. In fact, let me look up exact percentage for Indian Wells for Tsitsipas uh, compared to the other Masters. Yeah, so 50% win rate at Indian Wells is Tsitsipas losing in the third round in 2022, second round in 2023. 50% at Miami at 62%. Monte Carlo is 83%. Then you have 69, 68, 62, 65, 64. Second worst is 57%. Actually, the only one that's not 62% or over, which is very impressive, actually. But Paris, where the last two years he reached the semifinals. So he's only reached one quarterfinal. The other four results at Indian Wells for Step have been second round, second round, third round, and second round. That is very unlike the rest of the results that Steph has had. Uh, kind of reminds me of the U.S. Open, where, where Steph is also 50% win rate. He's got second round, first round, third round, third round, first round, second round. I don't know what it is about um, the courts at, at U.S. Open and Indian Wells that are so different for Steph from, say, Australian Open or from, uh, or from Cincinnati, where Steph has had great success, reaching three consecutive semis in Cincinnati. I, and also at the Australian Open as well. So I don't know what it is that those tournaments play so different, but whatever it is, I'm confused. <laughs> Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me the answers for why Steph can't figure it out. So anyway, I got Steph losing. Uh, I've got Steph, you know, still getting to the fourth round, which would be better than the last couple of years, but I've got Rublev beating him. And uh, part of the reason I have him making the fourth round, by the way, is uh, because I don't think the draw was that uh, is that crazy for Steph, to be honest. In that in that section, um, he's like I said, he's got Tiafo, he's got Altmar. Those are players that can be dangerous. But I got him to the fourth round. Then I got Rublev winning in three sets. Even if Rublev doesn't find his best tennis, I can see him beating Lahedka, Eubank, Sakshima. He could also play Murray. And it would be great to see Murray do something, but I don't expect it at this point. Section six, I've got Ben Shelton, I've got Sarindolo, I've got Jan Leonard Struff, and I've got Yannick Sinner. Biggest story of the section, does Yannick keep his win streak and his form going here? Uh, yeah, I mean, a guy who's this playing this well at the moment, winning 32 of his last 34 matches, I believe it is, winning his last 15 matches, continuing off of last year. Uh, I don't see that. I don't see Yannick losing very early. You don't see that happen very often. I think he's going to keep the form going. He's got guys like Kakanakis, Giron. Those are guys who he should beat. Struff is a mentally solid player, very, very tough player, but I, I expect Yannick to get through it. Shelton can be tough. Shelton can be tough. Shelton beat center in Shanghai. Um, and I, you know, he's got the, he's got the skills. He's got the belief to beat a guy like Yannick, but I just don't expect it, to be honest, um, at these courts, and I don't know. I don't I don't expect it, but we'll see. Um, Sinner's got more experience playing at Indian Wells. He's got more, more, more experience in these moments, and he's just... I mean, for all the belief that Shelton has, Sinner's got to be in a world of belief at the moment um, when it gets to those tight moments, and uh, I just think that Sinner is the more consistent at the moment between the two, but... That is a dangerous guy, a dangerous guy in there. And yeah, I expect Sinner to get through this section. Absolutely. Best matches of the section. I've got Sinner versus Shelton. And I also threw Menzik versus Shelton in there as well. I think Menzik versus Shelton could be a very, very good match. Uh, Menzik's got a qualifier. Menzik having an incredible run in Qatar. Getting to the final there. That could be a great kind of uh, battle between two young players. So, yeah, that would be uh, that would be a lot of fun. I'd also point out, like, Kokonakis, Giron, Shorich, Struff. I mean, th these are players that are fun to watch on the other side. So I'm not going to say they're popcorn matches, but I'll just say Section 6 shows up with some uh, matches that are pretty fun watches. So uh, anyway, that's what I would say about that. And um, Dark Horses, potential upsets, the players I just named, Struff, Shelton, Menzik. Round of 16, I've got Sinner beating Shelton in two sets. Um, I just think Sinner at the moment is on another level. Everything that I said, I think it could be two close sets. Um, you know, maybe like 7-5, seven, 7-6 seven, or something like this, like it was a few months ago. But I uh, I think it'll be two sets for Yannick. Section 7, I've got Zverev, Greeks for Bublik, and Demonor. We're getting to the end of this, and I'll go through the quarterfinals, semifinals, and final. Story of the section... A few low-key, dangerous, underrated names here might shake some things up. 
like in this section, in section seven, you got a guy like Draper, you got Greek Spore, Bublik, Thompson, um, a Demonor, I don't think Demonor is a dark horse at the moment, but uh, uh, also Taro Daniel who beat Djokovic at this tournament uh, like five, six years ago. I don't think Daniel will do something like that again, but uh, you know, Hoffman is also a guy. Uh, um, you know, I uh, I think that there's some there's some guys here that are pretty pretty interesting and that could do something. And um, I just think that ne never know. I have a few big kind of takes with the section matches. The matches of the sections: Vera versus Draper would be fun. Greek Spore versus Vera. Bublik versus Demonor. Uh, I'll tell you what. I think Greek Spore is going under the radar. Draper speaks for himself. I mean, he's he's a guy who's always dangerous. He's been playing well recently. Uh, if you want to know about Jack Draper's recent results, he lost a Demonor, but he took a set off of him. He had to withdraw. It's also health with Draper, which is so unfortunate. But he beat Paul 6-0, uh, 6-4, six -oh, six then he beat Nishioka, he beat Kichmanovic, like I said, took a set off Demonor, and then his health kind of his health kind of ran out ran out on him. But um, outside of that, I lost time Paul in Australian Open. Um, he got to the final of Adelaide to start the year. At the end of last year, he got to the final of Sofia, two finals in a row. Um, and yeah, like I said, last week's semifinal lost to Demonor, but like I said, his health. So anyway, uh, and then Greek Sport. Greek Sport's form recently has been fantastic. I'll, I'll tell you what Greek Sport has been doing, but I think Greek Sport is the ultimate under the radar player. I, I really do. If we're talking about an genuinely under the radar player, I think you don't have to look past the name of talent Greek Sport. This guy is under the radar and uh, people never talk about him, but he's got everything. He's talented, he's mentally strong, he's got the weapons, and uh, he doesn't have that many weaknesses. He's pretty complete, he's pretty surface versatile, he's only improving, he got better last year, he's not. He's 27 years old, he's got some time left in the bank, and he's playing so well at the moment. Dubai last week, he lost to Bublik, two tie-break sets. Um, I'll tell you his other results as well. In Rotterdam, he always performs well in Rotterdam, but this one was great, particularly great, I would say. He beat an unseated, unseated Lorenzo Musetti, 3-6, 7-6, 7-6. Then right after that, he placed three more consecutive tiebreakers to beat Hercoc, 6-7, 7-6, 7-6. Beats Rusevori, 7-5, 7-6. Then loses to Yannick, who is just too good. In Australia, came back from two sets, slowed down against Sapulin, then beat Feast. Um, you know, Greek sport is tough. He lost to Djokovic in Paris, the event before that, but he had big chances there. It was up a set. It was 4-4, 15-40, and Djokovic did what Djokovic does. Greek sport is tough, and he's under the radar. Event before that loses to Hercoc in three sets, who is playing great. Uh, I just think Greek sport is under, uh, Greek sport's under the radar at the moment. I always like Greek sport, and I think he's... He's primed for a big result because he is the definition of a hardworking dude. He is a hardworking guy, and he's just going to stay with it. And I think it's, he's just missing the results at the big tournaments. And uh, he's having too many, he makes things too difficult with himself and has too many close matches early on, especially at the big tournaments, especially with like a 96 player draw like in Dean Laws as well. But um, yeah, uh, matches of the sections, Vera Draper, that could be a lot of fun. Greek Sport versus Verov would be good as well. Bublik versus Demonor. Um, Bublik and Demonor are two of the most informed players. Um, Bublik with the final last week. Demonor winning the title. That could be fun. Two flashy guys. Demonor is so fun to watch. Now that he's at where he is, one of the most fun watches on the tour. My round of 16 is going to... Or actually, first, Dark Horse's potential upsets. I've got Thompson... I've got Draper, I've got Greek Spawn, I've got Bublik. Like I said, Jordan Thompson performed very well last year here, beat Sitzboss in a great match. He's got to be super confident. Um, he's got Bublik, and then potentially he's got Demonor in the third round. I don't know how much I like Demonor, honestly, at Indian Wells. I think that these are much slower conditions. These are slow, slower than a lot of hard courts. Like, sorry, a lot of clay courts. These hard courts are slower than a lot of clay courts, even. And I actually don't think it suits Team Norwell. I mean, this is a guy who doesn't like clay. It's like a Hewitt type. Like, he sometimes needs this, these faster courts to make his game really stand out and really impressive against the top players. I don't know if Team Norwell likes it that much. We saw him get to the final of Rotterdam, and then the next week he lost to Mickelson. Uh, he's going to have a lot of pressure and attention on him now. He's not always the guy that's performed very well at the big tournaments as Demonor. 
Um, so anyway, those are a few things I would say. My round of 16, uh, and Demon Lord can perform well. He's playing the best sense of his life, reached the Canada final. He can perform well. But my round of 16, I've got Jordan Thompson beating Talon Greek Sport in three sets. I think it's going to be the weirdest section of the whole tournament. I'm just going to make an out there prediction. Uh, Bublik is up and down. Uh, reached the final last week, but you just really never know with Bublik how he's going to show up. Thompson, he would have Bublik in the second round. I've got Thompson getting through that. Like I said, I don't love Demon Lord in these conditions. I think Thompson will like it. He liked it last year. And if Thompson brings that same level, uh, I think he can easily get to the fourth round. Can Jordan Thompson? Demon Lord is the tough one, obviously. He's one of the most informed players. Like I said earlier, I'm high on Demon Lord at the moment. He, I, I said he's playing like a top 10 guy, if not better. And I, I, I do agree with that. But I don't love these conditions for Demon Lord. And I looked it up for Tsitsipas, but these are Demonor's Indian Wells results to show that I, I really don't think it's the best, best tournament for him. To be honest, um, like at uh, like at Canada, for example, he's got 64% win rate. At Paris, he's got 60%. Those are both hard courts that play quicker. Um, you know, here at Indian Wells, he's got 50%, which it really isn't terrible, but that's three second round performances, including last year. Um, and then fourth round, one was a loss to Taylor Fritz, which isn't so bad, but the year before that, in uh, 2021, when Demonor was already the 22nd seed in 2021, and he's playing much better than he was in 2021, but, um, you know, Demonor lost to Alex, uh, lost to... Let me see. Was it to Tsitsipas? Tsitsipas in uh, three sets. That was the best performance, uh, best run that Tsitsipas had in this tournament. But, I mean, even before that, Tsitsipas beat Martinez. This was not a good loss for Demon or to Tsitsipas. Tsitsipas would then lose to Basil Ashvili in the next round. Tsitsipas doesn't love playing at Indian Wells. Not a great loss for Demon. I just feel Demon is never that comfortable in these conditions. And, uh, yeah, that brings me to the other side of the draw for why I think that Greek Sport gets through, not just Thompson, uh, or why I predict that anyway. Greek Sport's got a good draw. He's got Hoffman or Cashin to get to the third round. He's got a buy, like all the seeds, so he's the 27th seed. Then he's got Zverev or Draper. Um, Draper, you just never know with Draper, honestly. Um, you know, uh, I just don't know exactly how it's going to show up. The health is a concern. Zverev could always plays long matches uh, against Draper. And, um, yeah, Zverev, I just, I just don't know about him at Indian Wells. And Greek Sport, like I said, I just think he's primed for a good result somewhere. Um, like, Zverev at Indian Wells as well. Not bad, but he's never even reached a semifinal. Actually, Indian Wells is the only tournament where... Uh, it's the only tournament, Masters tournament, for a few things for Zverev. It's the only Masters tournament where he's only reached the quarterfinal once. And it's the only master sure may's not reached the semifinals for Zverev. So those are my thinking for Zverev. And I said Greek Sport and I said Thompson. Um, and I think that they will get to the next uh, to the next uh, round. I've got Thompson beating Greek Sport in three sets. And it's just Thompson. He's the most confident player at the moment. And yeah, that's kind of speaks for itself. I think both those are mentally solid guys at the moment. Thompson has mentally improved greatly which is part of the reason he's climbed up so well. Section 8, I've got, this is going to be fun when it gets to the quarters. Section 8, Hatchnov, Jari, FAA, and Alcaraz. Story of the section, how does Alcaraz look? This is the last section, by the way. How does Alcaraz look? And also, there are a few dangerous guys for Alcaraz, which is true. How does Alcaraz look? Uh, had to withdraw, withdraw from Rio after playing just one full, com one full really completed point, slipped on the second point in the match. So basically just wasn't able to play that event. Buenos Aires lost to Jari. I'm not that concerned for Alcaraz. I mean, it's true. If Alcaraz ends his career right now, he's already a legend of legends. Clearly, we would want him not to. And he's only 20 years old. And the hope is that he wins many majors and does all of this and all of that. But I just am not concerned one bit. This is something that every young player goes through. And it was always going to be tough for Alcaraz. He was never... Some guy that goes for so much and is so ambitious and is so low percentage, obviously is going to go through some difficulty. Shot selection, you know, figuring it, figuring it out. And I actually think this... I've, I've said before, I think the serves improved a little bit, but it's really looking shaky right now. 
And um, I'm happy to see that I, it doesn't seem like his coaches are really making him switch up a lot of things with the way he plays the game. I think that would be a mistake. Um, but the serve needs a lot of improvements, and he needs to improve on when to use which shot. I think those are some big key elements for Alcaraz. Also, strategically and mentally figuring it out during matches would be a big thing to improve as well for Carlos. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know exactly how he's going to show up, but I will say this. Sunshine Double the last couple of years, uh, I think everybody left the Sunshine Double unbelievably impressed with Carlos. I think it's true. Both years. Uh, both years. Uh, well, 2022 Miami he won. Last year it was Indian Wells he won. Uh, in such incredible fashion he won Indian Wells. Miami played two unbelievably good matches against uh, Tommy Paul and Taylor Fritz. Two of the best performances I've seen on hard course in the last couple of years were those two performances, which made it so impressive that Sinner was able to beat and come behind against Alcaraz in Miami, which made that one of the best matches of the year last year. That made it so impressive. And at Indian Wells, uh, he just played unbelievably well. Beat Medvedev like 6-3, 6-2. He won the first 10 points of the second set, which is nuts. And um, yeah, I, I just think Alcaraz always leaves the Sunshine Double so impressively. And uh, or he has the last couple years. Uh, the year before last, he played so amazing in Miami. Whether it was the match against Kasmanovic or the first, like the match against Sitsipas, um, the level he's been able to show, even from such a young age at this tournament, I, I just like. I think he likes the slow hard court. Like I think he likes a fast clay court, like in Madrid. And I, I think those are kind of his bread and butter. And I, that's why I hope that he can pick up on the confidence and use these as kind of stepping stones to get better form and improve. And I think that's exactly what we're going to see. I don't know if he's going to win Indian Wells and defend points, but I think that I hope that he at least gets to the semis and has a very good, respectable performance. And even a final would be better than that. We could have Sinner Alcaraz in the semis, and that would be great fun to watch as well. Um, but yeah, this section is no good for Alcaraz. This, this is tough. Uh, Jari is in here. You've got Marazan in here. You've got Hatchinoff who's playing well. You've got FAA who has a winning record, record against Alcaraz. You've got Arnaldi and Von Osh as well, but Arnaldi in particular, who's he's under the radar and he's a young kid. Um, you Von Osh or Arnaldi are two players that, uh, two guys that uh, could be the first completed match, finally, that Alcaraz has played against a player younger than him. He played against Shung at uh, Australian Open, um, but uh, Shung had to retire, so unfortunately. So anyway, uh, that'll be something to watch. Actually, ho either of those guys sh will play Alcaraz in the second round, so we should, we should see that, hopefully. Um, anyway, that's kind of the story of the section. few dangerous guys for Alcaraz. And how does Alcaraz look? I think Alcaraz is going to start improving his form at this tournament. I don't think it will be nearly where he wants to be, uh, at least for parts of it. But I think that he's going to start getting into form. That's my guess. But we'll see. I thought he looked pretty good at the EXO as well. I think he's going to move with much more freedom in this tournament when he's really playing real matches. Matches of the section, I've got Hatchinoff or Jari taking on Alcaraz. In that fourth round, uh, probably Hatchinoff, but we'll see. Alcaraz versus Arnaldi. Watch it. Watch it. Trust me. Uh, F.A. versus Alcaraz. That could be fun. That was a great match at Indian Wells. One of the better straight set matches you'll see was that match at India. Uh, was that match at Indian Wells. Alcaraz played just such benign shot making in that match. It's amazing. Alcaraz, even in matches that are easy straight sets, even in matches he loses, he always he always gives the crowd its money, its money's worth, and he pushes his opponents to play their best, their most creative best. And that's why I felt like Alcaraz did in that match. So that could be another great one. And Alcaraz, if F.A. steps up, F.A. pushes Alcaraz to his best and challenges him, which it means pushing him to his best. Von Ausch versus Arnaldi is another one I included here. I think it's the only really first round match that I've included in my uh, in any of the uh, matches uh, best matches to look out for. But I think that that's a great um, the great match between two young guys. I think Von Ausch, honestly, in my eyes in the future has at least top 20 potential. And I've, I've said for a while, I kind of think he has top 10 potential. Not now, but in a long period of time from now, if he keeps improving and working, I see him as a big talent. And uh, Arnaldi is clear, Arnaldi is clear. And um, dark horses, potential upsets, I've got Arnaldi, I've got Hatchinoff, if he even would count as a dark horse. I've got Jari as well. 
Hatchnop Jari could be an interesting third round as well. And uh, yeah, round of 16, I've got Alcraz beating Hatchnop in three sets. Hatchnop still struggles against the top guys. Um, and Alcaraz, you know, everything that I said, I think he'll pick it up. Alcaraz has bigger weapons in general than Karim does. And I just think that Alcaraz will be so, so, so motivated in this match to reach a quarterfinal, to not fall behind the pack with how well Yannick is playing. I expect Yannick Maybe at this point, while this match is going on, we'll have already reached the quarters, and Alcaraz is thinking, I gotta win this match. Especially because world number two is at stake here. Big time. Big time. Sinner has a great chance of getting to world number two here. Uh, he just got to world number three for the first time. He'll, he's now world number two in the live rankings as this tournament begins. And um, I believe that uh, Alcaraz needs to go one step further than Yannick in the late stages to... Uh, not allow Yannick to uh, pass into the rankings. So big, big moments in the in the rankings, and I, I think Akra is going to be so motivated. Okay, quarterfinal predictions. Uh, so I'll give you my quarterfinal, semifinal, final predictions here. Quarterfinal predictions. I've got Djokovic beating Rude in two sets. I mean, this is going to be very tough for Casper, uh, honestly. Um, you know, on a hard court in, in a moment like this, if Novak is playing well enough to get through Umber, I don't know if Casper's going to have that much for him. I don't think he has that much that can hurt Novak, and I like Casper. Actually, getting to the quarterfinals wouldn't even be that bad of a run for Casper at this moment at Indian Wells. So we'll see if he can do that. Fritz uh, beats Dimitrov in three sets is my other quarterfinal. I think Taylor picks it up at Indian Wells. I, I think he's a guy who's actually been playing really well this year. Um, I didn't think that Fritz got enough credit for how well he played Novak in Australia. Fritz plays so well here. I mean, he lost in the quarterfinals here last year, but it was to Yannick in an incredible match where both played phenomenal. Fritz at Indian Wells every year is amazing. And I'm not just saying 2022. 2021 is the year where I was like, man, Fritz at Indian Wells is crazy. When he beat Sinner like 6-4, 6-3 in straight sets when he was outside the world's top 25, I thought he played like a top 10, top 5 guy. I, could, I literally couldn't believe how well Fritz was playing in that match. And uh, I think that at Indian Wells, he just plays different. And I, I've got him beating Grigor in three sets. And uh, Grigor is so good right now at beating everybody outside of the top 10. He's only losing to these top guys. Well, Fritz is a top 10 guy, and I think at Indian Wells, he's clearly a top 10 guy. So, that's my pick there. Sinner beats Rublev in two sets is my other quarterfinal. I've got, uh, it's kind of like the Djokovic versus Rude. R Rude and Rublev are phenomenal players, but I think Sinner and Djokovic are just a level above at the moment. Two, the best two players in the world, no doubt. So, I've got Sinner beating Rublev in two sets. Alcaraz beats Thompson in three sets. Thompson actually has troubled Alcaraz greatly before. I believe it was in Cincinnati, first round of Cincinnati last year, where Thompson was up 5-2 in the first set. Alcaraz managed to come back, and then Thompson won the second set, and I believe it was like 7-5 in the third set, maybe, um, or 7-5 in the first set, I can't remember, but it was a very close match. So I think Thompson is actually going to play well against Alcaraz. I mean, what a run that would be. Quarterfinals and three sets versus Carlos. But it's the same thing. I just think Carlos is going to be so motivated and say, nope, I'm going to start my great run of form and my rebound right here at Indian Wells. And uh, yeah, I just, think, I just think he beats Thompson because Alcaraz, I, as, as much as Thompson's improved on, uh, you know, just how solid he is off the forehand and being able to you know, survive better in the forehand forehand, make him more consistent and adding variety. And, uh, you know, he's always got have the good net play and the good hands, but just, you know, being able to utilize it well. And he moves really well as well. I, despite all of this, Alcaraz, if he's playing great, I just think, and I think he will play well. I think that, I think that Alcaraz is too top tier of a uh, player at the moment. <clears throat> Then I've got semifinals. I've got Djokovic beating Fritz in three sets. Uh, I think Fritz is going to get confident from, confidence from the way he played him at, in, at, uh, at the Australian Open. I do like Fritz at Indian Wells. And um, I'll tell you what. I, uh, 
Djokovic has been playing a lot of like a lot of matches where he's losing losing sets, and uh, I think that that could happen here as well. I don't think Novak likes playing big serving guys like Fritz. He hasn't played at Indian Wells in a long time. This is Fritz's home. He'll have the home crowd support. And, uh, you know, I just think that, which might be good for Novak, actually, but I, uh, you know, there's, I just think that Fritz, if he's doing better off of, you know, defending better than, he, than usual, which I think was a big thing in his win in Delray Beach over Paul, if he's playing there well there and uh, on defense and if he's, you know, surviving off back end to back end like he was at the Australian Open, I think it could be tough and I go three sets. Sinner versus Alcaraz. Sinner beats Alcaraz in the other semifinal in three sets. I think Alcaraz takes a set off of Sinner. In the same way that Al Alcaraz doesn't like playing Sinner, I don't know that Sinner loves playing Carlos, which is part of why the rivalry has, is as good as it is. I think it's a challenge for both players. And, um, you know, Sinner, if Alcaraz is just the absolute powerhouse he is, showing up every single shot in the book, Sinner needs to do the same, and he I, I still don't know if his transition game, his net game, is quite where he wants to be. It's better, but I'm not sure it's quite where he wants to be. But listen, the Sinner serve is so superior to the Carlos serve at the moment. They're both elite returners, but Sinner is just so consistent and so just solid off that forehand. The backhand, I mean, has been solid, but that forehand is just not missing. I didn't think Yannick played his absolute best in Rotterdam. The guys were getting chances against him. Monfils took a set. Raonic nearly took a set. Um, he was, he gave away a break after having four set points against Demon Roar in the final. He didn't play perfect, but Yannick has been so consistently amazing and at the highest tier. And to win his first tournament back after winning a first Grand Slam, he's the first player to do that since Hewitt. So Sinner, I think, wins in three sets. Uh, I don't see Sinner losing before the semis in any scenario. Final, Djokovic and Sinner. My result is... Djokovic beats Sinner in three sets in the final. Sinner so good. Djokovic so motivated, though. And Sinner is impressive anyway. When's the last time a guy's beaten Novak in three of their last four occasions? But I, I think that part of what I said about Rotterdam is true. Not all win streaks last forever. And Novak's motivation, I think, is going to get him over the line here. And he's going to say, this is my turf at Indian Wells. Yannick also trying to win Indian Wells for the first time. Trying to win his second Masters title. And uh, trying to beat his first uh, guy, a top, top guy to this extent at a Masters final, for example. So this would be a fairly new scenario for Yannick, even though Beijing and Vienna really kind of played out like Masters. And, you know, he's won the Australian Open. He's won a Masters. So he's basically already done this. I don't think that would be that big of a deal. But... I also don't want to pretend that he's been in this situation a million times. Novak has, and I think Novak's going to be too good. That being said, this could go either way. Yannick is playing amazing. It's so good for the sport. I think we've been waiting. I've said this in previous videos, but we've been waiting for the young guys to break through the doors. I feel they've broken through the doors. I don't think it means that a new era is here, but I think it means that Novak's at the top, Yannick is at the top, Carlos is at the top. These are the top three players in the world, Daniil right below him as well and uh, the the top three two guys that are 22 years old or younger in Novak and two guys that are holding major trophies and earn them with wins over Novak and I think that's an exciting moment I think that's gonna be really fun for Indian Wells I've got Novak winning it uh, tournament he's won multiple times before but Yannick could do it as well I'll just be content uh, I'll just be compelled to watch it but yeah, I've got Djokovic over center in three sets. Uh, Fritz and Alcaraz having some good runs as well. Thompson with a dark horse run. Uh, Rude with a good run. Dimitrov with a good run. Rublev doing well. Um, so yeah, those are a few things. Greek sport getting to the fourth round. That's my draw. We'll see what actually happens in the tournament. But yeah, I'll be back here with more content. I appreciate you guys uh, joining in like always. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, like always to Anthony's Tennis Hub. Please share around the podcast, the channel if you... If you could, would help out, please do. And don't forget to like the video. Don't forget uh, to do all that stuff. Appreciate you guys watching. And uh, yeah, I'll do more videos on Indian Wells for sure. And um, I'll see you guys at the next one.